let's go okay well welcome back beautiful spring day minus the sun minus the warmth and minus the niceness but it's a spring day i guess we're out here at the sawmill because i have some two by fours i need to cut now as you know having a sawmill has its ups and downs probably way more ups than downs but one of the big ups for me is having the availability of lumber anytime i need it so i have a project going on not a big project so i'm not really gonna fill you in on all the details but i need some two by fours and i've got a pile of logs here that i can make them out of and this will save me about four bucks a piece so check out today how having a sawmill quickly adds up in its value based on the sheer cost of lumber for me i can probably swing out a two by four out of one log considering these are pretty small logs i can swing out one two by four in probably all of five minutes and to be honest i can probably swing out more than that in five minutes so the savings goes up very very quickly and with the cost of that being pretty reasonable it doesn't take long to pay for itself so as you can tell the coda dog and myself are out here mulling around so i'm gonna get down to work hopefully try not to talk as much as i normally do so that i actually get some lumber cut what you see behind you is already a good pile and so this is what i'm going to add to today beautiful thing looking at this lumber as you can tell i got it stickered already it's out here drying and eventually i'll be able to put this into use as well so that's what i'm up against today and don't laugh at the big pile behind you i was thinking about that this morning and i almost grabbed the chainsaw to come out and take care of it just haven't quite got there yet Critter up there or something going on over there you guys hear that maybe the sounds were in my head anyways that pile i will take care of it i do have a plan to cut that up i'm going to cut it into 16 inch lengths or maybe a little bit bigger that's going to go to feed my maple syrup evaporator so for those of you who are saying do something with that i will i'll get there i'm busy i got all kinds of stuff on the go so i gotta prioritize at this point and right now i need lumber that's what I'm doing. Welcome back. Before I do anything else though, I can't forget, many of you are new here and I do appreciate you logging in and subscribing to the channel. And so I wanna take an opportunity to welcome all of you. This is quite a small net community here. I'm learning just as much as you guys are learning. You may not even be learning from me. You may be just watching me for entertainment. Regardless, I appreciate you guys all being here. If you do have something to contribute, by all means, put it down below because that's how this community grows. We learn from each other and I'm learning every day. So put any questions, comments, concerns, your experiences down below, whether they relate to this or any of the other projects you see going on in this channel. And that way our community sort of grows and we end up learning something after all. All right, the pregame checklist here. So that's untorqued. So let's open up the bits and pieces here. And what I like to do, we'll just clean this out. We'll make sure the blade is aligned perfectly with the back of the band wheel, which it is. We'll do the same on this side. That one feels good too. Everything's cleaned out. Check the belt. Belt could probably be replaced in the next little while. I do have a replacement, so we'll get that put on before long. You'll notice here that this, uh, this what do you call it, a follower wheel, the wheel that doesn't drive the, the band. This one here, the... The belt on it has to uh, protrude a little bit above the cast iron wheel, which it does. So that means the blade is not right on the cast steel, which we don't want. Okay, so that's good. So what I'll do next, shut her down here. Just leave her like that for now. As I listen to the rain start. I thought it was April showers bring May flowers. It's May now. What's going on? Okay, next thing. Let's get the torque wrench. Torque her up. 25 foot-pounds. It's not a lot of force to get to 25, so I take it slow. And if you guys are uh, wondering what size socket this is, to be honest, I don't remember if it's metric or imperial. 
I'm just using an Imperial 15 16 socket. So that's that. And let's put some fuel into it. Coated dogs on guard out there. Well, if this wind would quit, I'm basing this on listening. I'm trying to listen to the fuel. That's pretty good right there. We'll call that good. And let's test how much I can still feel water. So that's good. And here's a little tip for you guys. This right here, it clogs up with some organic matter, whatever settles in the bottom of this tank. There's probably some sort of uh, some sort of organic material coming from those barrels and all kinds of other stuff. Anyways, to get it out of here, what'll happen is you open the valve and you'll notice that water will not come out. Well, I'm making a liar out of myself. Sometimes it won't come out, and so what you have to do is flick this, and then the organic matter makes its way out, and then you simply readjust your, your screw here back to where you had it so you get your nice trickle. And you can see that's about what I, you guys see down there? That's about what I use, just a little trickle. Okay, so blade's tight, it's got fuel. We've got water, let's check the engine oil. Knock on wood, I have never run an engine out of oil, but the first time I do it, I will kick myself. So I always make sure to check the oil and not cross thread the drain plug. Okay, so that's good. I think other than that, we're good to go. One other thing I'm gonna tell you guys about, I like to wear earmuffs when I'm using the sawmill. I just find the constant noise isn't really much fun to listen to after a few hours of cutting. And so what I use is I use these 3M work tunes and these connect to my smartphone and uh, I put on some music and it's kind of a nice, uh, nice outing if you're out here with some ear protection on with some tunes going and really, uh, really makes the whole episode out here more enjoyable, uh, at least for me. All right, let's see how it starts. Cold start hasn't started in a while. We've had below zero Celsius temperatures. Turn on the oil, excuse me, gas. Turn on the choke. Third pull, not bad. Okay, we'll let her warm up a little bit. I like to just give it a touch of throttle to Help the idle get a little higher. Don't want to go too high though. If you start hearing the tinging sound, that means the clutch is engaging. The clutch tinging is a, another episode I'll put out. If you hear some sort of tinging right now, that is not good. You have to lower your idle adjustment screw, but this one I've done that before and we're in good shape. Got my tape. Be right back.
Okay, well, that's some cutting there. I cut a few two by fours. I'll cut a few more here today before I leave, but normally what happens, I don't sticker my log or air it out and put it into the stack until I get ready to leave for the day, but I'll show you just right now what I normally would do. So I got a little space here at the end of the sawmill. This is where I keep the wood, let it air dry a little bit before I take it up to wherever the project is. What I have in front of me here is just your typical recycling bin. And I have some one by one inch rough material. This is just leftovers. So if it's not gonna hit the, uh, hit the firewood pile, sometimes I'll cut some of the leftovers into one by one material. Then I just take it over to my chop saw and cut it down to, you know, whatever length uh, I can get. Anyways, I use these to space out my lumber so that air can get around all sides of it. So what I do, I start by laying two beams on the ground or I lay them on blocks. That gets the, the lumber off the ground. And uh, when I'm done cutting for the day, I just lay these on the previous row. And I like to actually lay these usually about four feet, uh, four feet apart. So one sticker to the next, about four feet. But in this case, uh, it's actually probably closer to five feet if I don't even have that. So that's good enough for me here today. And then I just take the pieces I cut and you just stack them on top. Nothing special here. And the only thing I like to do, in addition to the one inch air gap in there, I also like to keep about a one inch gap here between the boards so the air can circulate all the way around it. And you just put all your boards up that you cut for the day and you come back. And if you have a humidity meter, uh, you can you can check out what the uh, excuse me a moisture meter. You can check out what the uh, the water level is in the in the lumber. But if you don't have one of those, then you probably do what I do and go by weight. It's pretty heavy right now, but when it's dry, you'll notice a big difference. So that's basically it. Now I've had quite a few questions from folks just like you who have asked me, do you build with green lumber? Meaning, do you rip out the old husky, cut down a tree, drag her over to the sawmill, make it into lumber? and put it up wet absolutely what you have to pay special attention to is the fact that that piece of wood which was previously just a tree is going to dry over time as it's in place in whatever structure or project you built and as it dries the wood is going to shrink if you don't pay special attention to that when you're securing that wood in place you can have cracking and all kinds of issues so all i say to building with green lumber is do it with caution do it with research ask questions anyways that's just about it for me here today. I got a pile of wood here. I got a pile of logs there. I'm going to turn those logs into lumber here. And I probably won't get that done today, but I will eventually. And I hope you guys are there to see it. Guys, thanks for watching. Make sure to come on back next time and I'll see you then.